Oh, this is Greg Gasson Wing Rigs coming to you on the 13th of March, 22. Time on deck is 21, 1300 hours Central Daylight Time. And I've got to bring a, you an update on this story about the Iranian missiles, which hit Erbil in Iraq in the Kurdish region and hit near the U.S. consulate. Indeed, this happened. So we're going to report on what actually took place. Now that the fog of war is uh, kind of lifted on this, we can see what actually went down and the significance of it going forward. So uh, buckle up. We're going to go into this. Some of you told me it didn't happen. Some of you told me it wasn't true. I've even had one of you telling me it was a lie. Ha ha. It happened. And just because I break news don't mean it's not happening, guys. I brought you breaking news. And I do that sometimes. Sometimes I bring news before it hits any single media or any other YouTube channel. As uh, that uh, This section was on KLW World News, though, in this case. But I have brought you news sometimes first. And I try to do that when I can. So that's why you want to subscribe to my uh, channel, bang the notification bell, and click all, because I can bring you things that keep your eyes wide open, head on as well, because I have contacts. And I bring some of my contacts on this channel. So uh, I find out things. And I bring it to you sometimes as soon as I find out because it, you need to know. And that's what I'm here for is to help you see these things. Now that one, I admitted that, that, you know, we didn't have all the details yet. I admitted that. I said, Hey, this is going down. We don't know the whole full story yet. I brought you what I heard and what I heard was pretty darn close, pretty good. So we're going to go all into that. What does it mean? Yes. The Iranians fired missiles and there are things to grade over there. And there may be retaliation, maybe not from us, perhaps from Israel. This could, and maybe uh, deterioration is occurring between our, uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran also. So that might be the partnership between Israel and Saudi Arabia that may lead to a war with Iran. So we're going to go all into that. What does that mean for us? What does that mean in the bigger picture? With everything going on in Ukraine with China and Taiwan, China and India. Yeah, there's a lot of tension in the world today, too much. So hopefully we can find ways to tamp some of that down. But in the meantime, uh, subscribe to my channel, bang that notification bell, and click all. And bear in mind, I do have videos that you want to see, videos that tell you things that you need to know, how you can grow. You're going to have to grow your own food with inflation food coming up. If you want to save money and have food availability, that is the smart thing to do. You might have videos that cover that. I have videos that cover how to eat free from the weeds and trees. But mind you, if we have a nuclear war, you need to save seeds. Check my link to True Leaf Market, and you need long-term food storage to get you through until the weather gets good again. <laughs> oh, yeah, by the way, I got a playlist on nuclear survival. You need to check that out on my video uh, channel. But also, guys, listen, I got a special deal right now. If you go to prepwithgreg.com, you can save $150 off a three-month supply of food that lasts 25 years. This stuff will get you through. Now that you can bury this stuff because it's, it comes in these sealed cans, and it won't break. It is durable. It is tough. It's got these pouches inside, which also can, you can put these. These are sealed, and you can put them in your. Yeah, I opened one. I made a mess. <laughs> but you can open one. I mean, yeah, you can uh, put these in your backpack, and poof, off you go. That's four servings in one of those bags, as opposed to hard can, which is two servings. So um, check it out, guys. Great deal. So uh, prepwithgreg.com, $150 off, 2,000 calories a day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a deal to make you a winner. And you can get $50 off of a two-week, uh, four-week supply, which is two of those buckets, six of those buckets come with a three-week supply. And you can check on the My Patriot Supply logo, and it takes you in all of the kind of goodies in there, such as purification and sanitation of water, air. And guys, they have simply the widest selection of long-term food storage of anybody in the market. And they have availability. And their prices are, have not yet jacked to the ceiling like a lot of the competitors, but don't wait too long because everything is going up fast. So get it while the getting's good. Enough said on that. Let's do some website sharing. Let's talk about this some of this stuff because when I brought this story, it was not on the news. When I brought you this story, it was not on YouTube channels. It was not on the news, uh, except for KLW World News, by the way. You can check that out. Uh, and maybe we'll go there for a little bit too. So, um, uh, so I brought you a unique perspective on this story. Let's do some website checking and uh, see what some of the other stories are on this. Let's go here. Boom. And this was one of the earlier stories that come out. And here you can see here they thought that the uh, rockets were hitting a U.S. Army base when this 
was released. And this is Daily Mail, which is a British uh, newspaper. This one eats up too much memory, so I'm gonna kill this site here in a minute. Now all these British sites got too many ads. As you can see there's videos of the bombs, the missiles, the whole enchilada. I can bring some of this to you from, uh, I think from Twitter, might come in a little better. There's a news station nearby that was hit. That's from a distance. Let's watch this one, see if we can see something. It's an intense missile barrage. It says near US Army base. I think this is the one that shows the multiple hits. Let's see. One. No, this is not the one. There's one that I look like I can't. That's what it's just coming. Oh, that's not the one I thought it was. Anyway. There are, I saw, I have seen some really good video on this, but there's just a lot of stuff in different places. This shows the location. This is near the, the Herbal International Airport, which is east of Mosul. This is in the Kurdish, Kurdish region of Iraq, in northern Iraq, hit by, now you can see the missiles here, uh, right here. Blow this up. I hope I don't kill my memory on this. Watch full video. You don't want to get too much into that. As you can see here, guys, multiple large explosions. Yeah. Multiple large explosions. These were large rockets. They hit near the current near new U.S. consulates. What they actually hit it when this was written, they thought U.S. Army base. See the the, the, the governor of the uh, region there actually reported that U.S. facilities were hit. What they hit primarily was the old U.S. consulate, which apparently Israel took over and the Mossad was operating. In. So that's what Israel announced. And maybe that's why they targeted because Israel apparently had taken out some Iranians. I told you in the video last night that there was a, uh, a bit of a hot war. kind of. It's not just a proxy war. There's a direct little bit of low-level warfare going on between Israel and Iran right now. It's low level. It hasn't gone into a flashpoint of a full full throated attack war. But that may be, you know, how many, how many of these things happen before it goes there? Iran at attacks Iraq's uh, Ibril with missiles in warning to US and allies. And one of the US it says here, see near new US consulate. They actually hit the old US consulate. We're gonna look at that in a minute. And so they say that, well, it actually caused some pretty good damage at the old U.S. consulate. And there was damage for miles around, including the news station media uh, uh, place. It was like a couple of miles away, as I understand, at least a mile. Here we go. That's the news place. Uh, it had, you know, ceiling tiles come down. Of course, the U.S. State Department said there was no harm to their facilities. You know, some of us are thinking that's a little bit of a hooey, considering how far away there was harm done. And they, they, the new consulate is actually basically right next door to where these things were hitting. So somebody said they missed. I don't think they missed, guys. We couldn't seem to understand at the point why Israel would be, why Iran would be attacking is, uh, U.S. in response to something Israel had done. And apparently they were attacking an Israeli facility. So that seems to be the answer to that. So I don't know I'll watch all this stuff. I don't see anything in that video. <clears throat> So we're going to close that and we're going to go to Arabian news. Basically, I think this one is out of Iraq. Iraq demands clear explanation from Iran over herbal attacks. Summons ambassador. Now, uh, as I said last night, uh, most of Iraq is Shia. Shia has a majority, basically runs the government. Iran is Shia Muslims also. But uh, still, even with that, uh, you know, Iraq called them to the table and says, why did you attack our country? 
even though they were attacking the area, it wasn't principally Shia. So uh, there's some questioning on this. So Iraq demands a frank and clear explanation from Iran. Well, that's, you know, normally a nation getting attacked like that would declare war. <laughs> but like I said, it's a little chummy between these two sides, between Iran and Iraq in this regard. But, you know, this probably strains that chumminess quite a bit. Quite a bit. But here's what, here's what you got to know. Some of you says, well, no way, the Iranians didn't do that. I had that as one of my comments. No, the Iranians didn't do that. It was probably the U.S. or the CIA, the Mossad, or, or maybe it was Afghanistan. We left so much stuff there. Yeah, we did leave a lot of stuff in, this, in Afghanistan. And we all know false flags occur. But uh, in this case, Iran claimed it. Iran claimed this. And this is Al Jazeera, okay? And I want to show you Iranian websites. Iranian guards claim ballistic missile attacks in herbal and i even told you that that i had seen video of these things launching from iran that night i saw some videos before i went live i just didn't i wasn't subscribed to twitter then so i couldn't read through that i just subscribed to twitter today though so it should give me more flexibility in the kind of stories i bring you in the videos i bring you so um that's just one more thing to be subscribed to which you know, I'm a big fan of, but you know, I just did it. So any repetition of attacks by Israel will be met with harsh, decisive and destructive response. So like I said, this is in response to uh, an Israeli attack on, uh, as I said, guys, there's a smoldering little uh, so, uh, covert war going on between Iran and Israel. And it has included ships being sunk on both sides. And uh, there, you know, I brought one of the breaking stories I bought, brought you on this channel back uh, over a year ago, uh, summer before last, was of a multiple explosions going on inside of uh, Iran. It was just a whole bunch of them all at once went off. I broke that story to you guys. I brought the news media to it. So I have, and that came from my sources within my Secure the Grid Power Grid community that I'm connected to. I've been connected to colonels and generals and uh, I've got all kinds of connections like that. Sometimes I do bring breaking stories and they come from different sources other than the news. Now, so I've had people attack me and say, Greg, y'all you do is cover what's in the news. I don't read the news, regular news. You know, you don't send me uh, going ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, CNN, even Fox News. Uh, and I will sometimes show you what they're saying about things, but they're not my sources. Um, but they're the sources, yeah. And once, so yeah, but then I got, so I got attacked. I've been attacked for uh, t uh, using only those sources, which I don't use as my sources. And I've been attacked for not using. So I said, oh, great, it can't be true. It's not covered in Fox News. It's not here. It's not there. <laughs> well, it was actually it just showed later because I broke the story. All right. So we got to talk about what this means for us here in a minute. But see, the, the, this set parts of missiles were retrieved and it, and it was manufactured in Iran. You know, you can tell where they were manufactured, you know, according to forces looking at them. But this is an Al Jazeera. So we're going to go to the uh, large explosions. Yeah, these weren't little bitty, little, little bitty cartouche Russian rockets, guys. These weren't little cartouche Russian rockets. These were big missiles. And I saw reports from Nord said exactly what the nomenclature of those missiles were. I ran across so many articles, guys. So there we go. And there it is. That's the consulate that was hit, the old consulate. That was a U.S. consulate at one time. So, but the new U.S. consulate has been built near there. It's going to be a um, much larger facility. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, we're at that one. Here we go. These are the missiles being launched from Iran. Tehran, public relations of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards in a sta uh, statement issued on Sunday confirmed that the military body has targeted the Zionist center of plotting and evil to, by pinpoint miss accuracy missiles. Well, apparently they were pretty accurate. So there you go. This is the Islamic Republic News Agency. They claimed it. You can also find it in the Tehran Times. Tehran is the capital city in Iran. That's where the Iranian hostages were held. 
once upon a time. Let's see if we can get a better picture of this. There we go, guys. There it is. That is the consulate, the old American consulate, which apparently was taken over by Israel. And that place was damaged pretty good. And the U.S. consulate was right next door, apparently, the new one, or real close. And even though news stations a couple miles away and other places said windows were taken out for a couple miles all around, apparently the U.S. consulate received no damage at all whatsoever, according to the State Department. Yeah, I buy that one. <laughs> I think they're being charitable. You know, it's really strange how much the uh, current administration is able and willing to take from uh, Iran. I am going to uh, try to pull up another little... Uh, Hang on. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to wait. Hang on, guys. There's a lot of video on Twitter. Give me a second here. Stop share. I'll try to pull it up for you guys. Give me a second. Got to pull up the right thing, find it. There's a couple more things. I can't open too many channels at once. My computer crashes. I would have done this video earlier, but it crashed because I had too many windows open. I got to replace this computer. It's just too outdated. The RAM crashes when I put anything on it at all, it seems like. I will open another one. One open there, I guess it's too confused. Okay, very good. I think this is different. Let me open up some of these little. All right, we're going to come in here in a minute. Give me a second, I'll share this again. Share screen. Ding ding. Oh, got an itch. Here we go. This is the newsroom getting hit by the shock waves, the blast. Check this out. The sound. And then we're getting rocked pretty good. There's another place about to get rocked. Yeah, run. <laughs> Reddit cameras and uh, Kurdistan's 24's cafeteria that's in there. Yeah, no, ceiling panels are coming down. More ceiling panels. Look at that, guys. <laughs> Whoops. That's not really so funny. Hang on. Watch this. Oh. That's yeah, some separate blast that really shook it up pretty good in there. Really uh, ripped up the ceiling panels pretty good. So, you know, and this is like a couple of miles away. So let's say the U.S. Embassy, of course, didn't get any damage from this. No. Couldn't have happened. Couldn't have happened. <laughs> this guy's bending down. He don't know what to do. Oh, what happened to the camera here? Did it fall? <laughs> Security camera fell out of the ceiling. Wow. I said there's another page here. Let's look at that one. Somewhere, I don't know where I, I can't find it now. I had an earlier video. Maybe it's in a stack. It was an earlier video. Oh, we've already seen that. We've already seen the news. Let's see what this is.
uh, FATA 110 missiles. That's what their FATA 110 missiles launched from the uh, Aerospace Force. Yeah, this is from, this video was taken from Iran, apparently on the launching side. I don't know, here's some missiles going up. Let's see. Uh, being launched there, they're coming out. I've seen some other video um, better than that from where they were launched. Might find it later. Maybe this is it. Yeah, that's out. Is that outgoing? Looks like it's outgoing. Yeah, it's gaining altitude. Yeah, I've seen better video than that though. So here's the airport and see so they hit this area right here, I guess. All right, we've had enough of this. So we're going to talk. I'm not going to go through and look at all these. Anyway, stop the share. Halo. Okay. So, U.S. Embassy didn't take too much hit. The U.S. Consul, the new one. Uh, they said no damage. That's a little hard to buy. A little hard to buy. So I think our, our administration is, you know, covering things up just so badly wanting this deal with uh, a peace deal with Iran. They're, they're willing to give up a lot of stuff. And that's one of the things that's troubling Israel quite a bit. Israel's been chomping at the bit, acting as if they're able to lot to attack Iran. Well, like I said, they're already in kind of a, a, a smoldering, uh, low-intensity war with them, a covert war. But it, it, the, the covert nature of it sometimes gets a little on the high end. This definitely is over the high end of being a covert attack. Uh, an attack on one country's facilities in another country, yeah, that's going to get some uh, people's uh, tied up in knots. Um, and, you know, given that the, the peace talks between the United States and Israel, uh, Iran have uh, basically come to a close, given that uh, Israel never trusted them. Israel did not support those talks. Israel felt like Iran was building their uh, devices anyway and would have them anyway, and we're on the verge of it. Uh, and Israel's been trying to find a way to get to and attack Iran. Now, their problem is, is their jets need to be refueled going there. And so they really wanted U.S. Uh, uh, tankers to do that. They ordered tankers from the United States, and they tried to get it expedited because they wanted to do this attack earlier. And the current administration would not expedite the delivery. But they're still going to be delivered because Israel has still ordered them, and that delivery has not been stopped from its regular normal date. It's just that the administration will not allow it to be expedited. So it's quite possible that there is an attack from Israel brewing in the works uh, on Iran. Iran, if they suspect that Israel is going to attack them, well, might possibly, and it was quite likely, to do a preemptive strike. Now, it's also possible that Iran will not wait for those tankers, that they will get some kind of deal with Saudi Arabia to go into uh, Iraq. Now, you know, Saudi Arabia it has Mecca. It's the, you know, the, the, the gathering point of Muslims, of all Muslim you know, faiths from Shia and Sunni, and it's holy land to the Muslim faith. And to them, it's just an awful thing to have Israel come into that country. However, Given the, the state between Iran and Saudi Arabia, it's because they've been fighting a pretty darn hot proxy war for some old time now through Yemen. And <clears throat> it's just quite, quite possible that Saudi Arabia would uh, facilitate an Israeli attack on Iran. And if Iran sensed that that was about to happen, who knows, better off. So if Iran and Israel go into it, it, it's quite possible to draw us into it because we've also been part of the proxy warfare situation with Iran, maybe covert warfare, because we have been attacking a little bit of their stuff and they've been attacking us not as much as Israel and Iran, but Iran considers America to be the great Satan. And Iran considers 
us to be the puppet masters of Israel, although many here think it's the other way around. So um, there you go. There's some things to consider. There's some things to think about. And uh, so we could get drawn into that. Well, who's Iran's allies? Iran is allied principally with China, but it was the Soviet Union, or Russia actually, that built their nuclear power plants. And here's another mm -hmm. thing you might not know. The International Space Station, which the Rock Cosmos is talking about pulling their modules off of and letting them fall into the ocean somewhere or re-enter over, you know, the United States or Europe as a result of our tensions with them and sanctions. We paid Russia to launch their elements. We prayed Russia to do what they did to build their stuff on the International Space Station. And we did it in a deal so that they would not build nuclear power plants in Iran, which they did anyway. Uh huh. That's why we have a joint program with Russia on the International Space Station. It was a basically a drug deal the Clinton administration cooked up with Yeltsin to uh, avoid uh, Russian engineers from being involved in Russian companies in building nuclear power plants in Iran. Russia took the deal. They took the money. They built ISS on our money, and they still did the deal with Iran. Hmm. Now, that's a fact. So that is what happened. And so Russia is in with Iran. Oh, yeah. But China is really the, the, the main sponsors of Iran right now. So, yeah, we're getting into it with Iran. It could escalate. We get into it with Russia. It could escalate. Iran might be used as a, uh, as a kind of a proxy or an instigator by either or these others. If uh, China really wants to hit Taiwan, they might go to Iran to take a preemptive strike on Israel. They might plant something and they might put a bug in Iran's ear and say, hey, look, Israel's about to hit you. We got the intel. There it is. So I don't know. This is speculation. Speculation is dangerous. I'm just saying this. I'm not saying these things are going to happen, okay? Don't say, Greg Allison said this is going to happen. I hear that all the time. No, I'm saying it might happen. It may happen. You should be aware so you can prepare just in case. It's like you might have a car wreck. Well, you buy insurance to make sure you're covered if you do. In fact, most states require it because a lot of people just won't do it otherwise. And you have mayhem on the roads and people losing their, their livelihoods over the loss of cars and idiots that won't get insured properly. You know, you know somebody who's a you know, terrible driver, maybe a, 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 a repeat offender of drinking and driving, will, will, will maybe not have any insurance, walk there and smash into somebody that... Uh, uh, doesn't have any other way to uh, compensate for being hit. Mm. So, okay, that's another topic. You know, I've been rear-ended a few times. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> my friends, insurance is important, and your own insurance, your own prepping is important because we are living in dangerous times. That's why I'm bringing you these messages. We could get into it with Iran, but even if we don't get it, even if it's just Israel and Iran, Israel's got nukes. They just thought they'd take out a couple of hundred of them or better. Iran is thought to maybe have a couple and maybe a whole lot more coming soon. They've got a Israel. Uh, well, Iran has a very formal ground force, conventional forces. They may get into it with uh, uh, Israel in various fashions and Saudi Arabia. It, Iran can block the Strait of Hormuz. Blocking the Strait of Hormuz would really send oil prices through the ceiling. Iran, especially Iran attacking the Saudi oil facilities would send oil prices through the ceiling. Iran could do a lot of stuff that could harm our economy. A war with Israel could release radiation, maybe even a nuclear winter that could affect our uh, well-being here. Either one, radiation or nuclear winter, could cause all kinds of problems for us, especially a nuclear winter riding on the back of a grand solar minimum, perhaps. So, my friends, there are a lot of downsides to a war between Israel and Iran. But the worst one is it could draw us into it or serve as a distraction uh, for us while other things are going on, like whatever may be going on in Europe and what may be going on in the South China Sea or the Sea of Japan, vis-a-vis -vis China and Japan, or between India and China, hopefully that's between them, but uh, there's several hot spots that can erupt any time now. So, uh, yeah, and of course, a lot of you guys say it wouldn't happen. Well, look what's going on in Europe right now. 
And look where inflation is going. I warned about this stuff with inflation some time back. It's here. It is here. The inflation is occurring now, and it's about to skyrocket. It's really the fuse is lit, the motor's running, the rocket's coming off the pad, but she's about to zoom. Once you have a rocket, how they start off the pad, low, slow, then they go. Vroom. Sometimes when, it just depends on how much weight you got for the thrust you're carrying. The thrust to weight ratio is high from the get go. It takes off like. Pshaw. So, but a lot of times it was the bigger rockets that takes them, they come off slow and then speed up. Well, we got the inflation now. And I think it's about to really ramp up. Once rockets speed up, same thrust, less weight, because as they burn more fuel, the weight goes down. That's why the more fuel you burn, the less weight you got. If you run the same thrust, then your speed goes up. You're accelerating faster and faster. That's what happens with those rockets. They got to have that a rocket can't fly unless the thrust exceeds the weight. <laughs> That's what makes a rocket fly. All right. So enough said about that. Um, my friends, get ready, prepare. This is serious. We are in very serious times with uh, what's going on in the Middle East. We don't know where that's going. It ain't looking pretty. What's going on in Europe is not looking pretty. South China Sea, uh, Sea of Japan. The even North Korea guys, North Korea is building and testing ICBMs. They're going gangbusters on this. What is in little Kim's head? Uh, I, I'm I can hear cuckoo birds up there. Uh, what is happening with uh, I don't know, guys? You know, it's just too hard to say. You know what? Sometimes I think we're being played by both sides, maybe by all sides. I'm gonna go into that in a future video. Um, and that's part of why I set the stage with that Putin video. It was really setting the stage for another video I'm planning to do down the road. And I'll mention that when I bring that video up, when I do it. I got some, I got several interviews coming up. I'll be interviewing uh, Dr. Peter Vince Cry tomorrow at lunchtime. I'll take a lunch break and interview him. I'll post that video shortly thereafter. Uh, well, I got to wait for probably my work. I got to take another break from work to, to do that. But uh, I will uh, post that video. And Dr. Pry is one of the foremost experts in uh, power grid defense, electromagnetic pulse, and nuclear weapon uh, strategy. He is, a, he is a weapon systems expert. So uh, Dr. Pry, it will be an excellent interview. And I'm going to be interviewing uh, quite a few other people uh, in, during the week. So just stay tuned. i got several inter good interviews coming up. You'll want to watch for those. And I'll try to bring you more breaking news and other things as they come out. And I still got that video I filmed uh, Saturday about uh, you need to plant your seeds. I, I was going to plant, upload that yesterday. And with all this stuff going on, I wanted to get that one up first. And I want to get this follow-up video up. Okay, now you got the story, as Paul, Har as Paul Harvey used to say. And that's the rest of the story. It's happened. This stuff took place. The bombings happened. Israel, well, I mean, the, the target was Israel. It was the old U.S. consulate which is now in Israeli hands next to the new U.S. consulate, which, uh, you know, surprised, you know, there weren't more damage done. But uh, I'm thinking that we're not getting a whole full story there. But we shall see. We shall see. Anyway, let's pray for peace. And let's hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, my friends. Be prepared. I saw one of uh, Brad with a full spectrum survival did a video that I hadn't watched it yet. He said uh, he was preparing for nuclear war. Well, it's a smart thing. He's asking if you're preparing. That's a smart thing. I'm going to check this video out. Check out. I got a whole playlist on surviving nuclear war. Check that out and more coming. So everybody take care. God bless. And uh, Greg out.